In this lesson, we will see how to use a set of data science techniques in a real-world scenario in the creative industry sector. In particular, we focus on a case study from the art sector. We consider the Floating Piers artwork, a large installation designed by Christo and Jean-Claude, deployed on Lake Iseo in Italy in June 2016. It has been a huge success, gathering more than 1.5 million visitors in just two weeks. The problem with the event is that nobody was ready for this success and no data was collected about the visitors. This means that the organizers had no insight about who visited the installation. The only possibility was to run an ex post analysis using social media as a time machine to look back to the event after it was already closed. To do so, we collected past content, thousands of tweets and Instagram posts in a few days, and we analyzed their text and images as well as their author profiles. Overall, we collected around 45,000 posts and 120,000 user profiles. A first analysis considered the volume of posts over time. This analysis let us understand that peaks of activity in different social networks happen at different times. Twitter is very relevant as a news channel, used to communicate probably the opening of the event, while Instagram is used as an experience sharing platform and becomes exponentially relevant towards the end of the event, when people want to share their presence. At the geographical level, we explore the distribution of the geotech content at different levels of granularity, from global or national level down to regional or local level. We can see relevant trends here, including the fact that not all the posts about the event are actually placed in the event location. In terms of content analysis, we can run topic extraction from posts. In this way, each of them is assigned to a set of topics with a probability of belonging to each topic. This is useful for categorizing the posts. Based on this analysis, we then cluster the users based on how they were covering the different topics. For instance, here you see a 3D map of user positioning along the three most relevant topics. The coloring of the users represent the tendency to be aligned to one or another topic. To understand the semantics of these topics, we can, for instance, plot the word clouds of the biographies of the respective users. As you can see, a clear trend emerges in this case. Based on the data we see here, we can assume that the first user cluster collects mainly travel users, while the second is all about art and design and the third aggregates internet, technology and media lovers. This is evident also in the second graph, showing the most frequent words used by users in the respective clusters. You see that words map very well to the categories of users. Based on this analysis, we can also build classifiers to predict the category of interest of additional users based on their features. In this case, we used a technique called decision tree to categorize users. This is extremely valuable, for instance, for targeted marketing initiatives, where we can advertise events in a personalized way based on interest. By analyzing images, we can obtain further information. For instance, by applying deep learning on user profile photos, we can derive demographic data like age, sex, ethnicity of users themselves. Here we can see a balanced presence of male and female users. We also notice a large presence of people between 35 and 45 years old and of Caucasian ethnical group. We can also recognize the objects present in the posted photos, again using deep learning techniques. The word cloud on the left shows the frequencies of objects and concepts in the photos. We can compare or integrate this with what people say in the caption, comments or hashtags of the photos. 
as reported in the picture on the right. We can see that the two extractions have very limited overlap. This means that people write things that are different or more informative than what can be seen in the pictures. Finally, we can also run low-level feature analysis for detecting peculiar facts. For instance, in this case, we can analyze the prominent colors in the photos. If we detect a high share of blue or bright orange, we can definitely determine that the photo is actually depicting the floating piers installation. By running experiments, we realize that by simply using colors, we can reach around 95% of accuracy in the detection. In summary, the digital or online world can be a massive source of information. You can benefit of it by applying the appropriate mix of techniques based on what inside you need, keeping in mind that usually it's better to start simple and then possibly delve into more detailed analysis when needed.